I began by just always like loving wildlife and nature, but particularly reptiles. And I sort of was born, I think, with a genetic predisposition to love reptiles, and I always have, and I've always tried to promote their well-being in any way that I can. I've uh, bought and sold reptiles. I've uh, designed or consulted with zoos and, and designed some things at zoos. And I actually got my start working with wildlife. I didn't know what in the hell I was going to do, to tell you the truth. So I began by wrestling alligators and doing reptile shows. And in the old days, when we did reptile shows, like wrestle alligators and do uh, snake shows with venomous snakes of Florida with rattlesnakes and cobras, what we would do would be to try to make the alligator kill us and try to make the rattlesnake strike and come close so it looked dangerous because the more dangerous it looked, the more tips that we got. And even though I was giving scholarly information about the snakes and telling them that the Eastern Diamondback rattlesnake was really menace no harm and really poses very little threat to anybody, but I couldn't help believe, but believe that every time I gave a, sh a, a show with alligators and made the alligator try to kill me, or made the rattlesnake strike and come very close to me, you know, several times. I felt that no matter what information I gave to the people, if they were afraid of either rattlesnakes or alligators going into my show, they perhaps left my show even more afraid of them because of what I made the snakes do. So that attitudes and those attitudes have changed over the years, and certainly mine has a long, long time ago. A Diane Fossey is the one that really got me understanding that animals were not as I perceived them, because I perceived the gorillas as a fucking, as a kid, everybody did this giant fucking monster that if you were unlucky enough to come up on one and you, it's going to scream and run out and it looks like it's going to grab you and tear you to pieces and nobody, who would dream that if you just sat down, it's just going to like scream and maybe like swatch you or something, but not hurt you or kill you or anything. But, and so then I started to look at all the things around me and when I had alligators at home as a kid and I'd watch how they acted and then I noticed that they never started to try to bite me and then later I had the crocodile farm and started to hand feed the crocodiles and train them and, and, and teach them name, their names. And, and uh, They are definitely cognizant of the individuals and they know one person from another. But not just crocodilians, uh, so lizards, snakes, uh, they all do that. Uh, we hand feed super dangerous monitor lizards, crocodile monitors by hand, or big giant rock iguanas. And they very gently take the food from our hand because they want to avoid biting us. They don't make accidents and bite us accidentally. Usually if you're bitten by something accidentally, you're hand feeding it at the very last moment. You move your hand because you get scared, and the lizard then instinctively grabs you and then knows it's you and lets you go real quick, but then the damage is done. But as long as you don't do that, there's very, very little chance of you being bitten by any large lizards that's been trained even a little bit by humans because he's just not they, they don't bite things by accident if if they bite you it's because they intend to bite you Uh, if you're working with venomous snakes, the worst thing about that is that it can kill you if you get bit by one. I mean, it's like you shouldn't have venomous snakes at all unless you have a, 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 an understanding at least of the basic behavior of the animal. Uh, and you're, you remember that your handling of any venomous snake dictates its behavior, and the behavior of the venomous snake should dictate your handling. In other words, you should handle it based on the body language the animal is using. Do you see it advancing to bite me? Do you? No. You know why it won't? Why? Scared shit. That's why it's acting like that. Really? It's terrified of me. As it should be. Tom's a scary As guy. it should be. <laughs> I'd be afraid of me too if I was a cook. You can actually get him washing your hand. I'm touching the top of the head or I can grab it in front. The venomous snakes really don't want to bite us at all. Like I said, their, their bites really are defensive and, and really for them to bite something and come that close to danger puts them at great risk too. So 
they don't usually. They can control the amount of venom that they uh, inject. So obviously a defensive strike normally is more of a bluff tactic than anything else. So you might get venom or you might not. There's a very high percentage of snake bite that are what we call dry bites, meaning no venom is injected, probably maybe even 40 or 50 percent. And it's simply because the snake is afraid and doesn't want to harm you, it just wants you to leave it alone. You get bumped sometimes by cobras or, or even other snakes sometimes. I mean, I had a, a, a western diamondback rattlesnake over six feet long, or actually over seven feet long. The one that's in that book by Manny Rubio rattlesnakes that Gordon Buchanan is holding up, or Gordon Cates. He bought the snake from me and he, he, we were bagging it up, he and I, and he bent over to bag it up and the snake hit him in the chest and he grabbed his chest and fell out of the room, this big east western, like with a head like that. And I thought it bit him and I thought he was gonna die. So the snake was on the floor and I bent over just to get the, the snake and the snake spun, struck again and hit me square in the throat hard enough that it hurt. And I thought, I'm dead. You know, and I grabbed my throat like this and I, I closed the door and left the snake locked in the room. And we stepped out and I'm looking at Gordon, but I don't see any blood. And I said, am I bleeding? He goes, no. He said, am I? I go, no. I said, let me see. He goes, we were scared to look, literally. And he moved his hands, he didn't get bit, and I didn't either. And so then we just like laid a can down and like <laughs> crawling the can at me. I never had a snake do that before. So they're very reluctant to bite, I guess is the moral of the story. They don't want to harm you. They want you to leave them alone. That's all they want. And if you leave them alone, I promise you that they'll leave you alone. Every time.